Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So today I have for you two videos. I'm going to tell the story of the wild swans, a short synopsis, um, and then I will break the two video out, uh, videos out. So there will be the same description at the beginning of these two videos. So if you want to see the walkthroughs of these two journals and you've already listened to my story from the first one, just kind of speed ahead a little bit so that you get to the walkthrough portion of the next journal. Um, I just didn't want to tell the story too times. <laughs> so let me tell you quickly um, the story of the wild swans by Hans Christian Andersen. This is just a quick synopsis. Um, so it's the classic tale of a king bringing home a new queen who doesn't want to be involved with his children. So he has a daughter, Eliza, and 11 sons. She immediately, you know, begins to try to find ways to get rid of these children, not to share her time with the king with them. And um, she enchants Eliza to look completely different. Um, and she enchants the boys to become swans by night, or uh, day, sorry, by day, and boys by night. So essentially they all get ridiculed out of the castle. She enchants the king to turn against them and they have to kind of fend for themselves. So the boys get driven away by like, you know, wild, you know, men with cannons and guards. And so they have to fly across the ocean to find a new home. Eliza basically runs out into the woods and time passes and she befriends some woodland animals and you know they all they all find new lives and every year the boys come back to the castle and they fly around the tower under gunfire trying to see if they can find their sister but they don't find her. So one day, um, Eliza, who's like living in a cave with some woodland creatures, some wild pigs, all of a sudden the wild pigs come running into the cave and essentially tell her that, you know, they're under fire from um, like a local prince who is out hunting with his... Um, you know, his, his men. And so they're shooting at the pigs. And so she goes out to confront them and, um, you know, gets rid of them. And then as she's out, she sees a deer that's injured by an arrow. So she tries to go to the deer to help it in some way, but it runs away and it goes to this lake. And it's basically an enchanted lake. And she sees the deer jump into the lake and then re-emerge as like a brand new, younger, perfect deer. And so she thinks to herself, maybe if I jump into the water, I will be reborn into my original self and I'll, I'll you know, look like I used to. Um, and my family will recognize me. But she's too scared to. So she doesn't. And some more time passes. And then one day, as the swans are flying overhead, they see this little beggar girl, essentially, um, in the woods. And um, one of the brothers confronts her and finds her. And... Um, they they start talking and she tries to tell him that, you know, I'm your sister Eliza, but he doesn't believe her because who he's looking at looks nothing like his sister. So she bravely decides to prove it to him by finally taking that leap of faith and jumping in the lake. So when she does that, she reemerges looking like Eliza. Um, and then, you know, they they try to find ways to bring her to where they're living across the ocean. But it's hard because they have to do like a layover in the middle of the ocean on this tiny rock in order to spend the night there because they're only swans by day. So if they risk the daylight coming, then they turn into boys and they would drown in the ocean. So they didn't have a boat. They didn't have anything like that. So they build this net and they carry her over. And essentially a whole bunch of stuff happens in the middle. There's like a, a fairy godmother. There's a bunch of things. But then eventually Eliza meets up with that prince who had been hunting and he is immediately in love with her by her you know basically by her looks <laughs> and so um but she doesn't speak and so the reason why is um at some point during this um trip back over the ocean the original evil queen finds out what they're up to and she again enchants Eliza and she she makes it so that Eliza is not allowed to speak um, or her brothers will die with one exception. She has to knit 12 
or sorry, 11 sweaters, one for each brother, out of stinging nettle. So she's not allowed to speak until she has completed these sweaters and put them on her brothers. Only then would they be transformed back into boys. But if she speaks before then, her brothers would die. So basically, she then meets up with this prince. He brings her back to the castle. She can't say anything to him. Then a bunch of ne'er-do-wells in the castle see her at night sneaking out of the castle and going into a graveyard to get stinging nettle. And so they immediately think she's a witch. She must be talking to spirits if she's leaving the castle at night. And what is her obsession with stinging nettle? So they lock her away in a tower. And, um, you know, basically they all they allow her is her, you know, basic food and her stinging nettle because she seems to love it so much, they sarcastically say. So essentially she toils away day and night and gets these sweaters done eventually meets up again with the Swan Brothers, gets the sweaters on them, and then finally she's able to bring them back to their form as men. And then finally she can speak to her prince, and then happily ever after happens pretty quickly after that. <laughs> so these journals are based on the story of the wild swan. This is the story that I've told for the beginning of both of the videos um, and it is now at this point um, roughly around six minutes and 30 seconds where I will break out into two separate videos. So see you soon! Now we have the walkthrough of the second of two Wild Swans journals. Um, this journal is made inside an original copy of Fairy Tales and Stories by Hans Christian Andersen and actually has the Swan Princes on the front. The book itself was a quite bright orange, but I toned it down with just some black... Um, um, inking and some fabric to just rebuild the spine. Um, I've put a black spine in behind and I've kept the original old spine here because I thought it was quite pretty. Um, and the back is also grunged up a bit with the same nice fabric and there are gold um, book corners on all four corners. So let's open on up to this um, front page. This is the original front page of the original book and you'll see I've created a pocket over here um, from the book plate of the wild swans, added some swans, um, some stitching and some fabric. There's botanical paper in behind and inside is a journal card of this beautiful black swan. There is blue fabric that backs the, um, the back side of the spine. And um, here this says copyright 1921, so I kept that original page there um, just because it's lovely to have those um, book plates inside the original journal. Um, this is just some nice lace on a yellow page. And then we have some swans flying around the tower of the castle. And some swans out in the ocean. And some writing space. Tea dyed paper. This is um, a flip out of Eliza sort of trying to pull one of the sweaters that she's been knitting away from one of these castle onlookers who are, you know, judging her for her weird behavior of going out into the graveyard to collect um, the stinging nettle to, to um, knit the sweaters. And here we have a pocket. These are all images from the, um, the box book box story of this book um, and it says that evil queen's spell and it shows Eliza sort of sleeping rough out in the woods and inside we have a journal tag that I collaged it says swans and it's the all the castle people um, you know with one of her sweaters made of the nettles and a little swan prints there and some black lace and just some nice blue papers. There's lots of blues and greens in these journals, kind of like hearkening to the ocean and the nettles. So here we have a pocket made from stinging nettle and botanical images. Um, and then Eliza with the nettle in her hand. And then this little journal card here. It just kind of reminded me both of all the brothers and the nettle. It's from um, like an ancient art book. And then this is a little flip out of the swans flying over the castle. And a double spread of these green leafy pages. These are this is handmade leaf paper. And then on this side we have an original image from um, the Wild Swans book, and this is a scene where the prince is trying to sort of, you know. Um, 
woo her, woo Eliza, but she's unable to speak to him. More of the lace and the blue pages. And then we have a belly band here and it's showing um, Eliza and a couple of her brothers and they're out collecting the nettle. And inside we have this swan and this little um, rook on a black backed journal card. And then here we have a fold out of Eliza putting the sweater on one of the swans. And just some tea dyed paper. And another belly band, it says white feathers and it shows the swan. And then inside we have from the original Anderson's Fairy Tales book, just this image of these. Um, these are actually geese, but I thought they were just beautiful. They're from the original book and I thought they played nicely along with the uh, theme of the book. Little journal card. And then we have some nice white ribbon here. And in back you can see, this is an image from the Swan Children. And it shows um, these, these girls transforming, well, these girls and boys transforming into swans. And then this is a picture of Eliza when the poor girl is just out in the woods and she's in her kind of rougher form after having been enchanted. Some more yellow paper. And then this is the end page from the, um, the Hans Christian Andersen book. And the second signature, um, there's five signatures in this book I should mention. The third one is the original story of the wild swans from this Hans Christian Andersen book. So this shows Eliza and one of her brothers um, underneath this rose bush. And then there's a little bit of the story. Eliza had saved her brother's lives and her own as well. Bells rang throughout the city and there was a huge celebration. The king lifted Eliza onto his horse and they rode off to the castle. Eliza was happier than she had ever been in her life. And then we have on this paper, this is just some nice tea dyed scrapbook paper. Um, it's held on with a rusty paper clip and it is a spread on the inside is journaling space. And on the outside I've inked in green the nettle sweaters and it shows Eliza sitting on the floor knitting away on these sweaters. And then some blue paper with some lace. And then here we have um, the Swan Brothers. And then this is just a little bit of green yarn that I knit into a belly band, just reminiscent of the green of the, um, the sweaters. And I've added a couple of paintings of a black and a white swan, and they're both little journaling cards and they just tuck right on in here. And this is held on with um, a rusty paper clip as well. It is a journaling card. It says the Swan Children and it shows this little child and there's some mice at the bottom and then there's a crow sitting up in a tree. And the reason I've included um, a crow or a black bird in each of the journals is because Eliza actually befriends a crow um, in the original story who's kind of like a mystic go-between between, between her and what's going on in the castle. You, you read mention of this bird. Then we have some vintage ledger paper and some indigo dyed paper. And this is um, a digital of a vintage napkin. And then this is a little pocket of this little kid with a basket carrying what looks like nettle. Um, and inside is a journaling tag. This is from the book, The, um, the Swan Children. And it shows the princess up in the tower pointing down at a couple of boys. So I thought it all fit very well into the story. And on the back, it says miraculously one morning. And then on this side, we have um, shadow puppets the happy swan and the bird on the wing, tea dyed paper. This is an original image from the Hans Christian Andersen book. And this shows Eliza hugging one of her brothers as the other swans fly overhead. And then we have a pocket here. It says feathers began to fall. And this is sort of showing the, the transition of the boys going from swans and then having their sweaters on and turning back into men. 
And then inside we have this larger folded journal card. And this is actually a, a Rupi Kaur poem that I just thought was really pretty with the lilies in the in the water. It says, to hate is an easy, is a la easy lazy thing, but to love takes strength everyone has, but not all are willing to practice. And I thought that was just kind of a nice sort of poem to put along with the story. So then we have a cabbage dyed paper pocket and um, this is an original image in the back of a, a white feather and a rose from the original book but this is from the story box of the story and it shows Eliza with her poor little pink fingers picking the stinging nettle. And then this is an image from the one of the original books, uh, the telling of the story of the wild swans, when they um, made a net to carry her over the ocean. So this is the swans carrying her. And then here is the story of the wild swans with its original illustrations. Um, from this 1921 book. So I've made that the center signature of the book. Um, and here on the back, it's, it's the back page of the Hans Christian Andersen book. So all the pages are here. It has the original illustration of the swans. Um, I think most of these are just text, so I'll just kind of quickly leaf through. Um, so you will be able to read the whole story. Yeah. And then this is another image from another telling of the story here of Eliza picking the nettles in the moonlight and some ribbon. And then this is just some tea dyed paper and this little image of the stinging nettle. This is um, a vintage napkin digital. Tea dyed paper. Um, oops, I think I skipped a, yeah, I did. I skipped a page right here. Um, this is some stenciling of like what looks like castle walls, bricks. And then this is another just beautiful book image of this woman and all of these. These are geese, but I felt like geese and swans are so just beautiful big white birds. And so I liked how they went together in this book. This is avocado dyed paper. And then this is a pocket that's very like ocean-esque. Um, it's a beautiful illustration from a storybook. And inside I made this journal card that says the treacherous sea to the north. And it just shows a little boy sitting on a rock. And it thought, made me think about how all of the 12 uh, or the 11 brothers would have to make that stop over in the middle of the ocean on the way to their home. And perhaps this is Eliza, um, you know, at the ocean trying to summon her brothers and some coffee dyed paper, lace paper. This is from a field guide. It's about swans, whistling swans, some gray paper. And then this is just held on with a rusty paper clip. It is from the story box of the book. Um, it says a miracle happened and it says Eliza reunited with her prince and all of her brothers back to their original form. So that's kind of the happy ending of the story when she can finally speak again and her brothers are safe and she's able to fall in love with her prince. Um, and then we have the other side of that swan, whistling swan, mute swan, um, some other geese. And this is coffee dyed paper, an indigo dyed pocket, and inside, um, well, you can see a little bit of, from the story of Annabelle Lee. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea. And I just liked that because it's just a nice um, storybook kind of, you know, saying. And then this is from uh, the Hans Christian Andersen original book. And it's just a little journal card that I made. And then more of that beautiful ocean illustration paper. And inside we have this fold out booklet. So on the inside we have this nice image, 11 beautiful wild swans, and then all these swans. And then a little image of the moon and some avocado dyed paper. And then here's some more of those white geese, tea dyed paper, the castle bricks, more of the vintage napkin and then just some writing space and up here we have Eliza actually talking to like her her fairy godmother type figure in the story and then some green ribbon and again Eliza and her like fairy godmother type figure and just some collaging and stenciling on cabbage dyed paper it says day and night made me think of the transition for the boys to go from swan to man and then this is from another book. It's actually called The Elegant Bear. Um, and then there was a swan prince in that book. So I thought it was very appropriate to include in this book. This is um, botanically dyed watercolor paper. 
vintage wallpaper digital, some stenciling, and then the swans flying overhead here and we see Eliza in the background. And just some nice book pages and collaging with green, you know, again, very reminiscent of the nettle. Some ribbon. Um, and then we have some beautiful swans from another book. And then I wanted to just leave this in here. It doesn't necessarily go with the story, but it does go with what this is, which is a handmade book. So this is about book binding, bound with love, um, essentially how you can make your own handmade book. So it's the center of the final signature and it's all the instructions um, to make like your journal. And then this just shows a little kid um, riding in an eggshell being pulled by a swan. And then this is another image from another book called The Moldy. And it's um, these guards that are like thistles. And they just reminded me of like the stinging nettle and the brothers. And more of the ocean. And then we have the swans flying overhead at a farm. Some stenciling. Vintage wallpaper, botanical watercolor paper, and then this is held on with a rusty paper clip. It is a large um, journaling card that has some fabric and it's um, all about stinging nettle. It's from a field guide. It's about stinging nettle and has this image of stinging nettle and all the information. And then this is another page from the Elegant Bear and I just decided to keep it there because it's quite sweet. And on the back, um, again from the Elegant Bear, we have the bear riding in a swan car. Um, and then on the back we have this large pocket from the book box. It says, fly away, be gone, and fend for yourselves. Fly away as voiceless birds, and shows the swans flying at night. And inside this pocket we have the botanical paper at the back with the oranges and the whites to go along with the book and the swans. And then this is a journal tag that I made that I felt like it depicted the queen meeting Eliza and sort of, you know, holding her back. And she has these keys here, which is, you know, an indicator that maybe she's going to be imprisoning someone and then this is just a little note from the bookmaker this is just a note about my journals and how to use them and what I like to do with them so that is the end of this journal thank you so very much for joining me if you're seeing this video these journals will be up in my shop very soon um, all of my social media information is down below and thank you again so much for joining me have a great day